Hi everyone, my name is Raul Ferro. I'm a senior research assistant in mineralogy at the Canadian Museum of Nature. And I'm also in charge of the X-ray diffraction lab. And I'm, I've been dealing with micro diffraction for uh, about 20 years now. So I've quite a bit, a fair bit of uh, experience with the, uh, the technique. And my goal as a technician has always been to uh, optimize the calibration and the data quality for our research. So in this talk, I'll uh, highlight a few components of my, uh, my approach to micro diffraction. But first, let's have a look at our setup, the most current setup that we have. It's a uh, D Discover by Brooker that we purchased in, uh, in 2018. Mm -hmm. And it's a really powerful and highly sensitive uh, setup in terms of uh, data quality. But it's also extremely versatile when it comes to its, uh, its geometry, really adaptable to your, your experiment, which was key for me because I had hopes of introducing a beam and scatter block to the experiment. And this allowed me to do so. But I'll be discussing this uh, beam scatter block uh, later in the talk. So what is uh, micro x-ray diffraction? Micro x-ray diffraction involves uh, taking sampling a tiny fragment from a crystal and then turning that into a nice uh, powder mount of about 200 microns in size. And when exposed, to, uh, to x-rays, this will give a nice diffraction image uh, similar to the one at the bottom left of the screen. This image reflects the internal structure of the mineral and becomes a fingerprint for mineral identification. So when transformed into a more graphical form that we call a diffractogram, it can be compared to a, uh, a database of all known minerals. So in this case, uh, the mineral was identified as hinganite. But sometimes you might not be able to match your pattern, in which case it means that you potentially have a new mineral species, which is uh, a type of research that we do here at the museum. So what you see on the screen is the typical material that we, uh, we encounter uh, in our research. So no need for a, uh, a scale bar here to understand that those uh, crystals are fairly uh, tiny. But we also analyze uh, display specimens to ensure proper labeling, or sometimes to uh, for minerals that we recently acquired or purchased just to confirm the species uh, that we purchased the right species. But in general, those uh, crystals are bigger in size. So in the, the two different types of specimens that we, uh, we encounter in the lab, uh, this gives rise to different challenges. Uh, for museum quality specimens, the challenge is to preserve the integrity of the specimen. So you don't want to damage the specimen and reduce its value or its potential for, uh, for it to be displayed. But at the other end of the spectrum, uh, a new mineral discovery may involve just a few um, millimeter sized crystals. And that's a single find and that's, that's all the, there is at that point. So you have to preserve as much material as you, as you can. So the solution for the, those two situations uh, is definitely micro X-ray diffraction because it, it only requires a fragment of about 0.5 millimeter in size to create the ideal uh, 200 micron powder mount. But it can also like, accommodate smaller fragments by just tweaking uh, the, uh, the experiment to, to make it work. Sampling is usually done under a microscope using all sorts of tools just to ensure proper sampling, uh, be it for uh, museum quality samples where you want to preserve the, uh, 
the crystals as much as possible. So you don't want to damage the, uh, uh, the specimen in, in a way that's visible. But also uh, for our research, it's all about preserving as much material as possible for all the analyses that are required when describing a new species. So it's really, uh, really tedious work, challenging at times, but also uh, really rewarding uh, when you finally get the data that you're, you're after. In terms of mounting techniques, you can really adapt your mounting techniques to, uh, to your needs. If you're, you have uh, plenty of material and you want high quality data, then you would make that perfect 200 micron uh, powder mount uh, that we discussed before. But in some situations, you might have a, a single fragment that you need to identify and you want to preserve it intact for other analyses. And, uh, by tweaking the sample rotation options and sample translation uh, offered by the instrument, you can get reasonable data to allow you to identify uh, the material without destroying the fragment, uh, integrity as a fragment. Sometimes you might have a really unique fragment that's really precious to your research and uh, you don't want to to risk losing it, you know, or have it fall off your uh, your mount. So a good way to prevent that is to use mounting oil and secure it inside a uh, micro loop. And this way, you can recover your sample using ethanol or acetone after uh, the analysis is done. And in some cases, you might have really tiny fragments that you, you need to analyze for you know, make sure you have, you're sending the right material for single x-ray diffraction or something like that. So in that case, increasing the exposure time or running it, running it overnight and retrieving the data uh, the next morning is a good way of, of doing it. And in this case, we confirmed that it was the right material and it was sent for a single crystal XRD uh, right after. As I mentioned earlier, I had dreams of fitting a, uh, a beam and scatter block in my experiment. Uh, I wanted to do that uh, to reduce the uh, background noise that was caused by the XRD experiment. And the flexibility of the uh, the unit allowed me to do that by moving the sample stage in a more vertical uh, setting. And that allowed me to slide in there that huge clunky and somewhat awkward beam and scatter block that I had built. But the, uh, the results were really conclusive and it even lowered the background noise by 95%. And this becomes really important when we're talking about uh, really high detailed uh, data, really high quality data. And to see the visual uh, result of that, it's really stunning the, the different difference that it makes. Uh, without the noise reduction or introducing the beam scatter block, the top two images are showing that really high and intense background but also it's affecting the data. This data would be good enough for mineral identification. That would, wouldn't be a problem. But we can see that the peaks are kind of washed out and the low intensity peaks are kind of starting to be hidden by that high background. But also having the noise reduction helped us reduce the uh, the runtime for our, our analysis. But if we look at the bottom two images where we had introduced a noise reduction and the beam scatter block, we can see that the lines are well defined. The contrast is higher, but also we see that there's more data that's being resolved. So the 
low intensity peaks are uh, separated from that background because now it's it's lower and less uh, invasive. That uh, increase in data is really important when we're uh, discussing cell refinement or structure solutions using the Reedvelt method. So it has improved the, uh, the data that we do our research with. So it's pretty obvious that micro diffraction plays a enormous uh, role in new mineral discoveries. And that is shown by the uh, fairly high number of new species that I was uh, involved with over the years. So we're describing 35 plus species. And on top of that, we have many species that are in the process of being submitted to, uh, to the IMA for approval. So this is an ongoing thing, like we are still discovering new species. So uh, just to show you how um, challenging and difficult those discoveries are becoming, I uh, included uh, my next challenge, which will be to sample that rim, the lighter gray rim, which it was uh, confirmed to be a new species based on uh, on its chemistry. So I'll have to recover enough powder from this phase to get the uh, high quality data that's required for a new mineral submission and a new mineral publication. So this is assured to be a lot of fun and extremely challenging, but I'm sure we'll, we'll manage to get some data off of that phase. So hopefully that was uh, informative and thanks for listening.